uh, this topic uh, is not generally taught in our bachelor levels course so uh, this might be a new topic for us so uh, the, uh, ct scan is a vast very vast topic i had like 115 slides in this presentation so i have removed so many of uh, slides to make it short and uh, uh, because if there will be more slide, there will be more uh, confusions. And uh, because it's a past thing, firstly we need to know the basics of uh, CT scan, and after that, uh, later on we can discuss um, many more uh, deeper things in in it. Um, if if we are able to know basic of C inter uh, interpretation of CT scan, it will be uh, uh, good for us. So before starting my presentation, I'll I'll tell you how I I have I thought to learn uh, CT scan. So uh, when I was in my fellowship, uh, one one of my relative came to uh, there for uh, uh, regular eye examination for him, and the complaint was like proptosis of eyeball. And after that, uh, someone has told them to do CT scan some of the ophthalmologists. So I, I went there and I had done the CT scan. After that. We came back to home, and my relative asked me, uh, "See the report. How is it?" And I was totally blank because I was not taught in my bachelor level anything, anything about CT scan. So I thought hey, it will be normal only now. Uh, and after that, when we went to hospital, the doctor said there is a mass behind it, and uh, the uh, the sinus in my face. Uh, was <laughs> so dull so uh, i thought later on to learn uh, ct scan because it is also a part of our optometry uh, skills uh, because sometimes uh, it helps uh, to make the diagnosis uh, exact diagnosis in the case and it also helps to make the management sometimes the surgical things has to be done or sometimes wait and watch to be done uh, uh, what to be done is decided uh, by seeing the ct scans report so let's start uh, CT scan. So the basic principle slide so can be uh, is there any problem? Yeah, yeah, fine. So uh, coming to the principle of ct scan so uh, uh, as we know the ct scan full form is computed tomography so tomography the term generally comes in our so many field like uh, uh, sometimes oct sometimes b scan so in that all, all always uh, the ways where the ways things comes their tomography works so uh, the full form of ct ct scan is computed tomography scan so compute, uh, computed tomography is based on the degree of attenuation of x-rays passing through the tissue with different density in the body so uh, when we explain attenuation attenuation means the reduction of the force so anything if passes in the air it goes with the great speed but sometimes when the any obstruction comes there so the speed of uh, 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 speed of that thing reduces so in the same way when the x-ray passes through the body uh, so if there is any obstruction any mass or anything the, there will be the reduction in the force of that x-ray so that reduction is calculated uh, in this scans and according to that the diagnosis is made so the attenuation is the reduction of the force so, uh, so in the same principle this computed tomography acts so uh, the degree of attenu attenuation will depend upon the energy of photon so how much dense is the mass how much uh, dense is the tissue or how much dense is the uh, bone or anything that the, uh, the degree of attenuation depends upon that one if the mass is thinner uh, so the uh, x-ray will pass uh, the speed of attenuation will be faster if the it is dense the attenuation will be a uh, little slower so these difference uh, differential density are used to calculate is the tissue which type of tissue or which type of mass is there according to that attenuation only the ct scan calculate so coming towards this picture so in this picture if you see uh so this is the rotating x-ray tube so when the patients are uh, when the patients lay down on the bed and uh, the, that bed comes inside this rotating wheel 
scans. So, so this this is the beam where the X-ray comes, and this beam rotated like a fan. From the every uh, three uh, from the 360 degree scan is uh, from 360 degree the X-ray passes and the scans are taken. So these scans uh, are detected by these ring fixed detectors. So this this detectors uh, this calculate the attenuation of the rays and this will be sent to the computer so it is a computed tom uh, tomography the full form of ct scan so i think this principle is a, 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 seems so simple but there are different things act in it but in a simple term this this is the x-ray beam and this rotates in a 360 degree and from 360 degree the x-ray uh, passes through this orbit and uh, this orbit uh, the attenuation calculated calculated by this uh, fixed detector and this will be sent to the computer so what is the advantage why why we, uh, we should do ct scan orbit so it allow us to find the location extent and configuration of the lesion its effect on the adjacent structure well, either the mass or anything is located in a single things or the adjacent structures are also involved in it and the exact location the size the, uh, which type of configuration shape everything is calculated by the ct uh, uh, is measured by the ct scan it allows us to comment on the possible tissue mass composition you know it also tells us either the mass is cystic mass or it is a solid mass so which type of mass also the uh, features of mass is also explained in this um, ct scan uh, report so in addition it also tells us uh, measures uh, us the size of the mass sometimes uh, it also helps uh, after surgical thing after uh, after surgery when we remove the mass the total mass is removed or not or any uh, component of mass is left so uh, these all are the advantages of uh, ct scan mm. so coming towards the view so there are two pictures so uh, in this picture we can see the clonal axial and sagittal so in in a simpler term there is three types of views three types of scans generally taken in the ct scan so first first picture if we see this is the actual scan so actual scan so the so the actual scan is uh, axial scan is taken from down to up or up or to up to down if we see this beam so this beam so this beam from upward to downward from this apex to upward so this this is the things in the axial scan so this axial is a so a if you see in this scan this is the axial scan of the ct scan coming to the coronal view so coronal coronal is like anterior to posterior from the anterior portion to posterior portion the uh, the rays beam of rays passes so it takes in the b this is the coronal scan and third one is the sagittal this one sagittal view so that is the c in sagittal view what happens uh, the uh, the ct scan machine divides our uh, head into two parts and after that a uh, image is taken from both two images is taken and the two images will be imposed in a single Im uh, image to give a 3d view of a image so that is the sagittal view so there are three views coronal axial and sagittal this is very important to understand that so that in further scans we can easily understand which uh, is it a normal scan or is it a uh uh what 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 type of mass or what is the irregular irregularity in the scan so any doubts in this views this is very important there are three types of views in the scan coronal axial and sagittal any queries we can explain it here only so uh fine so let's go towards the uh, other slide that is the indications of CT scan.
आज निवारण सोचने सो यो यो स्कैंस को यो भ्यूज बुझना एकदम इंपोर्टेन्ट हाई इसमें कई डाउट क्लियर कर ठीक सो सो इंडिकेशंस फॉर सीटी स्कैन इंडिकेशंस मींस के के पर्पज में हमें सीटी स्कैंस कर सकता सो इन विच केसेस वी कैन सेंड वी सुड सेंड फर सीटी स्कैन सो दैट इज अरबाइटल ट्रोमा so like any patient with accident or any traumatic injury in that cases to rule out any factors we can send for the orbital uh, uh, for the ct scan so orbital infection like orbital cellulitis or like endophthalmitis so in that cases also we can send for uh, generally for orbital cellulitis we can send for ct scan so orbital foreign body if a foreign body penetrates our eyes and it goes in the orbit so in that cases b scan only will not help to rule out where the exact location and the exact size of the uh, exact size of the foreign body so in that cases we can send for ct scans so calcified calcification or ultra ultrasound so in b scan if you see there is calcification generally in case of retinoblastoma where there or any melanoma or any eye cancer so eye cancer you can see the calcification in the uh, uh, in the vitreous and in the posterior surface so in that cases also we should uh, to rule out any malignancy we should send, we can send for ct scan so orbital masses so orbital mass cannot be ruled out by the b scan so in that cases we can send it for ct scan intraocular tumor with proptosis so any proptosis any proptosis we should find out the region why the proptosis is there so proptosis means the bulging of eyeballs why the bulging of eyeball is there so in that cases we can send for ct scan so lesion involving the bony orbit so any any lesion involving the bony orbit so in that cases unexplained proptosis or ophthalmo uh, ophthalmoplegia or ptosis so proptosis or ptosis which is not type, like according to your clinical evaluation it doesn't match ptosis uh, like uh, simple it is not a simple ptosis sometimes you feel that it should not be there but it is there so in that cases if you if you are confused in that cases we can So yeah. So orbital uh, sign with paranasal sinus sinus disease. In the sinus, if there is mass or uh, your nasal thing, nasal ectomal things is bulged, in that cases we can send it for CT scan. Unexplained afferent dis dysfunction, uh, ocular surface lead tumors or or in the orbital. Spread. so in the lead tumor only if it is a lead tumor the ct scan will not help but if the lead tumor there is the spreading in the orbital area so any tumor will be spreading like a malignant tumors will be spreading so in that cases so how, where till where the extent of uh, tumor uh, to find the exact location of the tumor we can, we can do the ct scan intraocular tumor with proptosis so intraocular tumors in that case is also we can send for ct scan so there are many more other uh, uh, indications where we can send for ct scan but this is the few important ones where uh, we can uh, send it for ct scan to rule out the exact location so ordering us scan so while ordering the scan what uh, we should look is we should we should write uh, in all the cases we should not send for ct scan where the uh, you if where the your clinical evaluation doesn't so much clear or you are confused with the diagnosis in that cases you can send for ct scan and a radio a two uh, where exact where the portion of uh, exact where the report you want like you feel like, uh, like it is a proptosis so proptosis how proptosis can be happen in posterior surface so, so if in the posterior orbital things any mass is there it, it will send for proptosis so you can write it there your clinical evaluation so that it will help your radiologist to get uh, where exactly the uh, scan has to be done because the orbit is a huge thing and where 
uh, the minor details can be missed so if you write uh, uh, the minor things where where the scan has to be taken so that will help our radiologist to uh, do uh, do at the exact place so uh, helps in the manipulation so sometimes uh, your clinical diagnosis uh, doesn't match with other uh, ophthalmologist or other uh, practitioner who have already done so in that cases uh, it can uh, the ordering ct scan can be beneficial so a scan informations so these are the few things where uh, we can uh, the basic things we we need to understand about the scan so slice thickness imaging plan uh, uh, hello sir uh, may i interrupt you sir uh, sir yes, uh, yes, i there, there is uh, someone uh, calling for there is on clarity on the voice uh, can you use your head, uh, headset sir yeah i'm i'm using my headset only there you go yeah, I don't know. There is some uh, disturbance or cracking or lagging voice. Now it is clear. Yes, sir. We can try, sir. Okay, so you can push it. Uh, uh, are you clear, sir? Uh, other sir, are you clear, I sir? Uh, not so. Uh, these are the thing a uh, scan information which we need to know that is the slice thickness imaging plan tissue window contrast contrast enhancement and cell bar so in, these all things i'll be explaining for the slide so coming towards the slice thickness what is slice thickness if if we see the uh, the scan here uh, the picture here so you see the lining right so there will be the thousands of like this scan uh, rays x rays passing through the orbit so the distance between these two lines, okay. So these two line tells us about the slice thickness. So this this is called as slice. So the difference between these two lines is called as slice thickness. So how much thickness you want? If if you if you, uh, if you want a very minor detail, your thickness should be less. If you if your mass is bigger and if you want the measurement, then the slice thickness should be more so that the more area can be involved. So, the, so if your slice thickness is thinner, there will be higher resolution. Because uh, if you pass your or toss, uh, if you pass a toss light through a glass, the uh, rays will pass more. From a wooden door or wooden window, the light will not pass. So, so same way, the thickness, how much thickness? Uh, if your slice thickness is less, the resolution will be more. If your slice thickness is more, the resolution will be less. So it depends upon the clinical evaluation, which which type, of how much thickness you want. So imaging plane. So imaging plane. I have already discussed about the axial, coronal, and sagittal view. So in axial, coronal, and sagittal. So this all scan itself has different, uh, uh, like different characters. So by seeing only one scan, we should not make the diagnosis. All three scans has to be seen. If sometimes in one uh, one scan, uh, one uh, mass is visible. In other two scans, is not visible. So we should uh, we should be we should not be making the final di a diagnosis by seeing only one scan. So all the three scans has to be seen. So so axial cuts com commonly extend from the maxillary area to beyond the orbital loop. From down to off uh, is the axial scan and depends upon the pathology of the clinical. Evaluation. So, uh, generally, axial scan is so much uh, important to see in the orbit scene and order the coronal and sagittal. Sagittal is not so much used in our in our generally in eye purposes, but in other like in your uh, stomach or in your legs. In that cases, the other uh, other uh, scans will be important. So coming to the tissue window. So tissue window is the other thing which we need to understand. So the human eye cannot see, uh, cannot distinguish 2,000 differences. So there will be multiple. I have said there will be multiple accidents passing through the uh, orbit in the CT scan. So all the rays cannot be identified by human eye. So uh, what happens? The uh, 
in the tissue window if you see this bone area and this bone area ethmoidal bone so in that how much this line if you see so the distance between the these two line is called as the tissue window so this you can increase this you can decrease so how much uh, how much bigger the tissue window uh, that much more visual field uh, the area of field can be seen if you decrease the tissue window the area of uh, the area of field will be decreased so it depend again depends upon case by case which which type of uh, a window how much window tissue window you want so if there is an orbital fracture things so in orbital fracture thing more bony area has to be seen so more tissue window has to be increased but in the cases of any tumors in the eye in that cases if your tissue window is less then also it will be uh, okay uh, to diagnose so uh, nowadays the uh, scans has been uh, uh, more advanced so it is called as dynamic imaging so in dy dynamic imaging what advancement has to be done so contrast has to come so sometimes your mass and like uh, uh, your uh, other uh, uh, like your uh, uh, vitreous things and the mass so the color of the mass and this thing is same so if you are not able to distinguish between how exact location and exact area of your uh, tumor so in that cases you can increase the contrast so contrast what will happen in contrast to so the bony areas your orbital area will be enhanced so the enhanced area if your uh, orbital things will be enhanced you can easily identify the location of your exact location of your tumor so this is done in the special cases Again, the Bell Selva, the spelling mistake L has been mistake. This is Bell Selva. So in Bell Selva, what happens? We tell the patient to close the nose and mouth and blow air. So in that case, what happens? The air doesn't go anywhere, and the any uh, like uh, in that special cases uh, uh, in the pseudo tumors. In that cases, this Bell Selva helps. So we close uh, we close the mouth and nose and tell the patient. To blow air, and after that, the scan, a scan is taken. So muscles contraction. So uh, tell the patient to stop the uh, uh, breathing for a few minutes, and after that, when the, you feel the muscles contraction, in that case, is the scan is done. So uh, these are the few scans uh, which is done in the special cases. So contrast. What is the use of contrast? Several tissue throw the different, uh, throw the different attenuation to the photon. So uh, as I have told you, if you are not able to uh, diagnose your exact location, in that case, the contrast, contrast enhancing uh, can be done. So, uh, how to enhance the contrast? That is the Hausen field value. So, H U value is the uh, unit which is uh, in which the X rays are being measured. So, in that case, you need to increase the H U value so that the contrast can be enhanced. So indications of contrast is the extra orbital extension of orbital tumor, vascular lesion, cystic lesion, optic nerve lesion, trauma with suspected lesion, and radio uh, radiologist this aggression. So in sometimes the radiologists are also confused to diagnose. In that cases, the contrast will be helpful. So Bhalsalva, I have told you. So uh, we we tell the patient to close the nose and mouth and blow air and after that the scan is taken. So in, generally in pseudo tumor or vascular lesions where the uh, vascular uh, uh, lesions lesions inside the vessels can be diagnosed through the Bell Selva. So while now coming to us the interpretation while interpreting uh, the scan basic data has to be shown. Sometimes the report are extensions while doing the scan. So first. If you if you have CT scan report, first see for the name, age, and gender, so that uh, the same report of the same patient is there or not. So first that has to be seen, and after that date of the scan, the scan is done at the same date or this is the old report, so that can be seen. So type of either it is a plain or contrast that has to be seen because contrast again uh, we you have to very more. Uh, if you can be confused if you think that contrast is a plain thing that that will lead the, uh, to the wrong diagnosis. Again, the laterality, which I left eye, right eye, that has to be seen. So while starting to, 
before seeing the report basic data has to be seen so that it's a, it is of the correct patient or not has to be seen so now this was the about the basic things of the ct scan i think uh, this was little bit boring now we will go to the cases so uh, so these cases we can see uh, this will be a little bit interesting and this this will uh, make us understand about the different disease cases so before going towards the disease we need to understand the anatomy so this is a normal a normal ct scan so this is the coronal cut coronal uh, view of the ct scan so in these cases this is the from 1 to 12 if you see the one first one is the optic nerve so this the central portion so this identify the optic nerve the second one is the ophthalmic artery so the small portion or the white portion seems as the ophthalmic artery so three is the sup superior rectus so this one two three four so this four is the rectus muscles one one two three four so these four are the rectus muscles and this is the central portion is the optic nerve so superior inferior medial and lateral rectus so these all four are the four rectus muscles and the ethmoid and maxillary sinus. So, uh, so can you please zoom it up on screen? Zoom? Yes, sir. Can uh, be zoomed. In Google, it will be zoomed. Zoom. Is there a problem? Uh, is it visible? Yes. Sir. Okay. So uh, this uh, these four are the rectus muscles, and this is the optic nerve uh, over there. And these are the two sinus. This one and this one is the two sinus. And this this in between is the nasal lacrimal duct. So nasal septum will be there. Again, in the other uh, this is the other uh, this is the axial cord. So that was the coronal cord. And this is the axial cord. So there is difference between these two. But again, you can see the first. So this is our eyeball. Okay. So this round one is our eyeball. And the white, this uh, the circular thing is is the sclera. Okay. The fourth, if you see the fourth one. So this is the sclera. The the whole round one. And this is our eyeball. And this the gray portion is the vitreous vitreous body inside the eye so and this one sixth one is the optic nerve this is the optic nerve in the axial cord so this is the both eyes so this is the actual uh, this is the optic optic nerve over there these are the two uh, rectus muscles this is the medial rectus this is the lateral rectus seven and eight so this is medial rectus this is lateral rectus and this is the superior orbital fissures. So fissures means with a small gap. So here the optic nerve passes through. So this is the this is called as the superior orbital fissure. And the uh, ethmoid and esternoid sinus is not so much visible in the uh, actually in the coronal cut more the sinuses are visible. And the, uh, and this is the pituitary gland below. So this is the normal scan. Okay. Now in different Cases, uh, different abnormal cases. How it looks like? I'll I'll show you. So now coming towards the systemic anatomical evaluation. So what things has to be seen? So bony orbit, globe, optic nerve, extraocular muscles, extraconal tissue, and orbital pair. So these are the parts of orbit which has to be seen while seeing CT scan report so bony orbit so in bony orbit i have told you it is generally for the bone depends upon the bone window so how so if if you see this is the normal regular uh, bone area so this the in uh, the enhanced uh, the enhanced part is the bony bony area so all these are the four bones 
so in this area you can see this damage here over here so this is the fracture so this is the fracture part so are you able to see the difference between these two eyes so this is the regular and this if you see there is a damage so this is the orbital fracture so the, uh, in this way you need to uh, differentiate between the other eyes so many of the times if sometimes the artifact or sometimes uh, the, the images are not so clear in that case what you can do you can always compare with the other normal eyes so if the patient is complaining if there is swelling redness and you cannot clinically evaluate the uh, uh, you cannot feel the bone with the fingers in that cases you can compare with this so you, you there is the orbital uh, this is the fractures or orbit orbital bone fractures over there again if you see here and this is the coronal cuts that was that was the actual cut so in this coronal cut you can see easily there is the orbital fractures so this is this is the orbital fracture again there is there are other multiple fractures how you see this one this is the regular uh, uh, regular uh, bony area and here you can see the abject fracture so this is the orbital bone fracture so if you compare the rectus muscles over here this is the regular size of the rectus muscles this can be measured but here you can see due to the fractures this muscles are muscles are also swelling so the, so if you if you clinically see there should be pain while opening mouth there there might be swelling temporarily near uh, your uh, ear temporal side of the things and uh, the extraocular movement will also be restricted in this case so always your report has to be uh, this, uh, report has to be matched with your clinical evaluation so th this is the difference in how how you need to see the reports of uh, the patient you always need to compare with the other normal eye if both eyes are involved so you can compare uh, compare in the part suppose uh, in in this area if the frontal has been damaged and this area is normal so in that cases you should compare with the other normal parts of the body so the fractures is easily visible so now the other picture so now this is the other eye so if you see this is the regular bony area and you can see there is the the fracture here. So the, this this is the RTA accident cases. So there there is the multiple fractures. So uh, the, in this way the bony area has to be identified. So this enhanced area all all enhanced area are the bony bony the hard surfaces. So if there is any distinction between the two surfaces, so that you need to think that <coughs> this is the uh, fractures of a, in the bone. So now coming to us the bony erosion. So what happens? So this is the normal axial cut of the uh, of the CT scan orbit. So in, this is the normal eye. So you see this is the optic knob, this is the rectus muscles, and this is the eyeball right but in this eye where you can see this is the mass so again this mass which type of mass is there that need to be compared with your csf so if you the if you this and this area is same that that means this is a solid mass because the solid fat area will be there but here this is more darker more darker means this is the cystic area cystic like water like thing is there so this is the cystic area uh, so this is the cystic mass so this mass what it has done it has pressed the bone and the few surfaces of the bony bony area has been eroded so it is called as bony erosion so if the mass is sitting in the bone so this this has depressed and few uh, bony erosions has been made so in this way your bony area has to be the bone parts has to be seen okay so now coming to us the globe so in globe what has to be seen lens vitreous aqueous and sclera can be identified in the ct scan report so generally if your 
something like for a small foreign body or any like uh, inflammation in the eye so that can be easily done by your b-scan but the large mass mass and you know you need to remove the mass so exact location and check measurement if you want and that this is in the globe area the ct scan will be fruitful so in globe if you see this is the choroidal melanoma so this is the normal eye if you, you see this is the normal eye and this is the sclera but if you see in the other eye you see the mass so this is inside the eyeball the mass is inside the eyeball and it is near the sclera and totally retina so sclera retina and choroid is the complex so this is the mass is sitting over there so according to your clinical evaluation and this one so this, this is diagnosed as the choroidal melanoma so this is the sagittal view in that view also you can see the exact location and exact where, till where the extent extension of the mass is there so this is the choroidal melanoma picture again in that in these cases if you see the, this is the normal eyeball and this is the with the uh, mass so this mass is not well identified this is the like irregular mass well ill-defined mass so exact location and exact size of the mass cannot be cannot be seen in these cases so this is the uh, normal eyeball and this is the mass so this this all white areas if you see so always you need to compare this mass with the csf uh, csf thing so this and this so the intensity of this is almost like near about similar so this is a solid mass if it is more darker then that will be like a cystic mass so in this eye if you see this is a regular eyeball but here the white intense area so it is similar to your bone so how much hard is the mass you can compare with if it is like this if your if your intensity of the mass is like this means this is a regular solid mass uh, like regular mass if it is a black one so that, that will be cystic mass if it is compared to the bone so if it is like this enhanced so means this is a very hard hard mass hard calcified mass so this is this is the case of retinoplastoma if you see the choroid portion is not so much involved so in choroidal melanoma the every till sclera it was it was extended but this is from if you see the retina retinal portion it has been extended so this is the retinoblastoma uh, case so th and this is the extension of the mass so while uh, doing operation if it is if it is not it is not involved in the posterior surface so it the simple ma uh, mass uh, mass can be removed but when there is extension the total eyeball has to be removed which is called an enucleation so this is the small mass so the mass excision itself can help in this case but if it is extended towards the orbit towards towards uh, towards the bone and if it is spreaded all over there so totally enucleation has to be done so in this way you can compare for the globe so the, uh, the previous one was the bone and this is for the globe so in globe if there is any mass so in this way you can see so now coming towards the optic nerve so in optic nerve what things you can see the displacement the crowding of the apex the fusiform enlargement the tram tag appearance and the relation to the posterior mass so coming towards the first displacement so if you see this is the normal a CT scan and this is the mass over there so this mass this is the optic nerve so what has done this mass has displaced the optic nerve so this is called as the optic nerve displacement exactly this optic nerve has to become like this centrally but due to this mass mass has pressed the optic nerve and displaced from the normal position so this is called as the displacement so all this how much displacement is there that also can be measured how much size of the like this is a 9 mm mass and due to 9 mm total 21.2 mm of displacement from there to there has been the optic nerve is displaced from 21.2 mm so in this way optic nerve displacement can be seen 
so crowding of the apex if you see the exact uh, the all four rectus muscles and optic nerve can be identified but due to the mass ill defined mass total crowding i think if you if you see in the crowded one if there are like four people you can easily identify one or two people uh, uh, from a four people mass but if the mass is so much crowded and if you if uh, you want to identify someone it will be difficult so it is a ill defined mass and due to it it is called as the crowding of the apex now this is the four image the first one is the fusiform of the optic nerve fusiform meaning in tapering from the both side both side mouth is tapered okay both side this and this is narrowing so this is called as a fusiform of the uh, optic nerve so it uh, it explains that the uh, the uh, spread has been in the optic nerve also the optic nerve is also involved in this case so this is called as the fusiform of the optic nerve now this is the tram track tram track means like railway track uh, tram is there in kolkata so it, uh, from the same way the tram track if you see the optic nerve has to be straight but it is like in the snake pattern so this is called as the tram track tram track optic nerve appearance and these two picture always if if there is any mass then always the mass has to be compared from a csf so how much dense is the mass can be compared if it is a black mass it will be cystic if it is similar to this this is a regular mass but if it is enhanced with the bone area so this is the very hard mass so according to that the optic nerve involvement and the mass how how, how is the mass location the size of the mass and the features of the mass can be seen so coming to us the extraocular muscles involvement so till now any confusion or anything have been asked i think <laughs> this is not so much interactive session <laughs> any, any question till now yes sir uh, I, i guess we have one question here uh, so gautam are uh, asking about what uh, should be a considered clinical in various scan of ct uh, on coronal uh, axial oscillation uh sorry the voice is not clear what, what what should be considered uh, while doing the ct sir on different yeah, what should activity? be considered oh, yes, what sir. should be considered um, right so yes thanks uh, yeah so uh, as in the b scan also b scan so many of the times we do b scan right uh, so uh, why we should do ct scan not doing the b scan why we should uh, do the uh, ct scan right so uh, in the b scan what is the extent of b scan the uh, total eyeball uh, if there is any inflammation if there is any foreign body the eyeball area can be captured from the b scan right but if something is beyond your eyeball right so some if there is something beyond your eyeball beyond uh, you, uh, like in the orbit in the orbital mass or in the optic nerve thing if, so in that cases only b scan will not help right so in that cases the ct has a ct scan has to be done so ct uh, the other main role of the ct scan is while doing the surgery right so if you want to remove the mass right so you you need to have the measurement of the mass how much big is the mass till where the extension of the mass is there so that it will help you to remove uh, help to, to remove the mass easily so in that cases the ct scan has a role uh, over the b scan am i able to give your answer yes it was pretty much good sir uh, there is also another question uh, all of the people asking about uh, uh, which generation of ct is best for ophthalmology yes yes copy it once again uh, which generation of ct is ct scan is good for ophthalmology yeah so uh, so in the different generation what what is the main uh, thing i have seen in the orbit is the clarity of the scan so before there uh, we were not able to, as i have explained in the previous slide about the tissue window 
uh, about the size of the scan 2 mm 3 mm size right so that was not in the previous ancient scan so nowadays while uh, in, in the uh, advancement in the ct scan so there are multiple advancement as the contrast as the the total size the location the displacement of the orbit opti, optic norm everything can be measured so uh, if you want like if you if you are in a not so much developed area and there is a simple ct scan so from that also you can do the diagnosis diagnosis but if you want the advancement in your uh, result if you want the total location has to be measured measured and total size where the till the extension is there uh, and the clarity always the clarity in the image so these things comes in the advancement in the uh, ct scan so in the all the advanced ct scans if you see so these things uh, will be different from your old ct scans so uh, there are different types of ct scans machine but uh, to, uh, if you if you write your uh, which type of uh, report you want and the radiologist sent you the same report so that uh, doesn't matter how much uh, from which ct scan machines you do so totally depends upon your uh, uh, which area you want so your clinical evaluation first has to be done if if it is a proptosis case generally you want the posterior surface to be highlighted right if it is your like uh, anterior uh, like uh, if you see the eyelid tumor is there so the anterior antero posterior parts parts has to be uh, highlighted if you if you uh, like it is a fracture cases the bony area has to be uh, highlighted so in that cases if you write a proper uh, area which has to be uh, highlighted so that will not uh, make so much of differentiate in the generations of ct scan So, Kapil, uh, any more questions? Uh, yes, sir. We completed all the questions. Okay. So, uh, later on in the last, uh, at the last also, we can have some more, more yes, discussions. Sir. So, okay. So, let's go towards the further uh, slides. So coming to us the EOM. So EOM is extraocular movement involvement. So uh, if your extraocular muscles, extraocular um, muscles has been involved so in that cases, what has to be seen? So in your extraocular muscles, the so enlargement of muscles is there or not has to be seen. The displacement of the muscles is there or not uh, has to be seen. Infil infiltration, infiltration means the the spreading of the tumor is there in the extraocular uh, muscles or not has to be seen entrapment means if the muscles is totally hanged over uh, with a mass mass has totally suppressed the, uh, the uh, muscles and it is not able to move totally so in that case the entrapment is there or not has to be seen so in, in the eom part this four thing is has to be seen so so this is the case of Graves eye disease, thyroid eye disease, Graves ophthalmopathy. So if you see, uh, you have seen the uh, normal scans of uh, CT scan. So this, if you see the size of the muscles, you see it is totally enlarged. This this size and this size, if you see inferior re inferior rectus, sorry, superior rectus and inferior rectus, medial rectus and lateral rectus. If you see see the size of difference, the laterals. A rectus seems normal, but the medial rectus size is enlarged. The inferior, the maximum enlargement is in the inferior rectus, and superior rectus is also enlarged. So if you see, if you do the extraocular, if, if extraocular movement of the uh, to of this patient, then while uh, while patient will look downward, there will be there are too much of restrictions. While uh, looking medially and let, uh, superiorly, there will be uh, mild restrictions, and while seeing the laterally, there will be very less restrictions. So, in this way, you need to clinically see. Uh, so, in thyroid eye disease, what what are the main symptoms? Is the enlargement of the muscles, and in thyroid eye disease, the CT scan is not so much needed. Only in the case where the optic nerve is involved or not. So, if you see this rectus muscles. Till now, it has not touched the optic nerve, right? While ap towards the apex, slightly it has touched, but there is no displacement of the optic nerve. So, uh, 
I so are the rectus muscles suppressing the optic nerve or optic nerve has been involved or not in that cases only in that cases only this uh, CT scan help in thyroid eye disease cases so this is the sagittal view also you can see the optic nerve is totally passing away there is enlargement in the muscle size but the optic nerve is not involved so so now till now the if you do the color vision if you do the uh, uh, vision visual involvement so in that cases the vision will not be so much decreased the color vision will be fine so uh, in thyroid eye disease we need to see for this optic nerve is involved or not okay so lacrimal gland tumor so you see the size of the muscles is fine in thyroid eye disease it was enlarged right so if you see this is are the four rectus muscle and this is optic nerve so it is fine but you see this mass this mass is coming over there so which type of mass is this if you compare from the csf so this is similar to this so this is a regular mass not so much hard if it is sim enhanced like this bony area so this will this will be the hard mass so this is the regular mass and if it is black like this so this this will be the cystic mass so this this is the regular mass over there so this is a lacrimal gland so lacrimal gland is located here superior temporally so this this uh, mass is arising from the lacrimal gland so this is a lac lacrimal gland tumor So while evaluating a mask, what has to be seen? So while evaluating a mask, size of the mask has to be seen, shape of the, it is well-defined or ill-defined, location, where it is located, laterality, which eye is involved, density, how much dense is the mask, is it harder, softer, again the contrast enhancement of the image is there or not. In the contrast enhancement in very hard mask, if it is similar to the like bony, bony hard mask is there then, you will not be able to differentiate between the bone and that mass. So in that case, the contrast enhance, enhancement has to be done. So homogeneous or heterogeneous, solid or cystic and displacement. So all these things, so all these things I'll be showing in this image. So size, how to know the size. So if you see this mass, a big mass over there. So this red line is measuring from anterior to, sorry, uh, horizontal measurement of this mass so, so in this way if you uh, there in the in report you will get the total measurement of the mass so this mass measurement can be seen size of the mass how much bigger is that again the shape is it well defined or ill defined what's the difference between well defined or ill defined well defined means if you see the total edges the edges are well visible so this is well defined mark you can able to define you can able to see Till the extension of the mass but here in the second picture this is the normal image so this is a normal image and this is the abnormal so there is a mass but you, can you can, can you identify the location this is the regular spread till here the spread is there so you cannot able to measure the total size of the mass so this is the ill-defined this is the well-defined so this is the different well-defined means total extension has can be seen but in illy file the extension cannot be seen the location the the location of the mass where the mass is located either is it, it is a intraconal mass or extraconal mass intraconal means it is in the beyond the two rectus muscles okay so it if it is in the cone of this orbit so this is called as intraconal but it is if it is coming to us outside also if you if you see the spread of this mass the mass is till here it has been spreaded so this is called as the extraconal mass so the <coughs> location can be seen laterality which eye either it is a right eye or it, it is a left eye so which eye is there that has to be seen density density can always be compared with the csf this is similar to the regular mass right? but in this area the third picture if you see this is the black portion right and if you compare from the csf this is the cystic mass so this mass the uh, picture three and picture one if you see this is the regular mass 
while comparing from the CSF. But if you see this one, if you compare, this is more black. Or, this is more black, uh, black, uh, black area. So uh, this is a cystic mass. Again, coming to us, the homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous means all over the mass, the area is uh, the mass is same. Homogeneous means regular mass. But if you see the third picture, heterogeneous means few area is little bit harder and other area are cystic. So this is a heterogeneous mass. There are two component. It is not a regular mass. So homogeneous and heterogeneous we need to understand. Homogeneous means it is a regular mass, but heterogeneous means there will be, be the mixed component. Uh, there will be cystic mass also and there will be regular mass also. So this, will be, this is the mixed component of mass. Either it is a solid or cystic. Solid or cystic means it is a, like a cystic mass, it is a solid mass. And displacement, the displacement of the optic north is there or not, that can be seen while evaluating a mass lesion. So while evaluating a mass, this all thing has to be keep in mind. So coming to the extraconal mass and intraconal mass. So there are two things, extraconal and intraconal. So if you see this picture, so this is a intraconal mass. If you see the rectus muscles are visible this side, this side it's not well visible, but it is inside the cone, it is inside the two orbit. So this is called as extraconal mass. But whereas if you see this one, this mass has extended till layer, it has come to us the sinuses parts also. So this is the extraconal mass. It has come out, it is spread out of the cone also. So there is two difference. Intraconal. It is it will be inside the cone of the eye. So it is called as intraconal mass. But whereas if the mass has been extended towards the cone of the eye and extent of the eye orbit, so this this is called as the extraconal mass. So wh what is the main difference clinically? What difference if you see if it is a intraconal mass, the proptosis will be if you see the eyeball, the proptosis if you, if you see the blue line. This is cutting the midline of the other eye, but here it is this this have, uh, this much proptosis is there in this eye. So this will be the axial proptosis. Axial proptosis means the eyeball will be protruded straight. So a straight protrusion of the eyeball will be there. But whereas in this, if you see this eyeball is protruded towards the nasally because the more of the mass is towards the temporal portion, so the eyeball is proptosing nasally so this will be the abaxial proptosis so there will be two proptosis axial and abaxial abaxial means like slightly deviated not totally straight axial means towards your uh, uh, straight total uh, towards your parallel axis so if the proptosis is straight so that will be called as axial proptosis and if it is like a little bit deviated nasally temporally or inferiorly or or uh, 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 inferior or superior, so that will be called as uh, abaxial proptosis. So if it is an intraconal mass, there will be axial proptosis. If it is an extraconal mass, there will be abaxial proptosis. So coming to us, this if you see this picture, if you see the clinical evaluation by doing the B scan, can I, I will you able to identify what is this? No. So in these cases, the CT scan helps. If you see the total extension of the mass, total regular mass is there, right? So you can measure this mass. This type of mass is this. If you compare from a CSF, if you see this is black one, so this is a cystic mass. So it is it is diagnosed as a dermoid cyst. So this can while uh, while seeing this is not a malignant, this is not a tumor, this is the benign. Uh, benign. So the, there will be two types of tumor, benign and malignant. So this is non-spreading type of tumor. So in these cases, cosmetically, it can be removed. So while removing the surgeon needs this scan so that what is the extension of the tumor can be seen and uh, can be removed easily. So these are the different cases uh, of while uh, doing the CT scan orbit. So this is a very vast topic. Uh, there are multiple cases. My, uh, many more uh, things has to be uh,
taking care while uh, interpreting the CT scan or bit reports. So this was the more simpler forms. Uh, so thank you. So any questions can be taken. I think uh, these were not so much interacting sessions. This is a, this might be new for many of us, but this is also a part of our I. In any any times in your life, you can get this because I have told you my story how I have learned about CT scan. Right? Because it is not being taught till our bachelor's. I think in master is there or not? I don't know. But uh, this is also a part of our uh, I. So we need to learn this. So any more questions? Can be, I'm happy to take. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, there is one question. Ask by solo uh, How to measure the actual size? Yeah, so that size is measured by the machine only. So as I have told you, the computer, the computed tomography, right? So if you see the uh, image of the CT scan, so this this ring size detector is there, right? So this detector work is to measure the extension and this rays how the rays passes through right so this uh, x-rays while passing through the orbit and this uh, fixed detector so these two help us automatically to uh, measure the size so in your computer automatically while doing ct scan orbit you can easily uh, nowadays it, it is an automated machine so automatically you will get the size if you write that if you want this uh, things to be measured automatically you can get the size but and while uh, in the ancient time uh, you, you need to mark the margin with your hand manually and after that uh, while marking manually uh, the size can be measured so nowadays nothing has to be done just do it the CT scan and while uh, putting the in your software which area uh, length you want that can be given by your machine um, by your CT scan machine only any more questions yes sir, there, yes sir there is another question what is the uh, difference between the ct and yama right uh, for the operation yes, yes. In the, uh, yes a couple not clear what once the, again okay uh, what is the difference between the uh, CT scan and yama right so optometrist uh, or clinical evaluation to optometrist again i am not uh, i am not able to understand your voice there is so much ego uh, Okay, sir. What is the difference between the uh, CT and MRI? Uh, oh, CT and MRI. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, like uh, these are the different techniques. Like X-ray, you, anyone has listened in X-ray about the X-ray? When your bone fractures are there, the X-ray has to, uh, to be done, right? And uh, like B scan like MRI. So MRI is generally done for uh, uh, this uh, head portion. This is the more extension form of CT scan. Right? If you want, because in your head, the small ruptures, small blood clotting has to be measured, right? So this is the fine more details of MRI. So MRI is generally done for the head one, but I know uh, uh, MRI is more vast form than the CT scan. If it is a big lesion and uh, big hemorrhages can be measured by the CT scan, but uh, the minor details, the minor ruptures uh, has to be done by the MRI. So in CT scan, like 2000 test scans are taken in a minute. In MRI, I think uh, 10,000 or 20,000 scans are taken in a minute or in a cycle. So that makes difference from CT scan. But uh, in all things, this X-ray and ultrasound, uh, ultra rays acts. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Sir. There is an, uh, another question. Can we yes. differentiate uh, where there is benign tumor or malignant tumor from the OCT CT scan? What uh, again, couple benign and malignant? I am able to understand. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, how uh, can we differentiate where there this is the benign tumor or malignant tumor from the CT scan? Okay, so. Uh, Benign and malignant uh, cannot be uh, dis uh, distinguished in a sing uh, single stand, right? So while uh, like uh, doing any uh, patient, you need to start from the history part, right? So you have to take the history since when the mass they have felt, okay? 
so uh, like uh, since one year two year three years okay so the history first thing in your mind has to be clicked what is the history the patient is complaining for the that uh, mass okay the second thing is the mass is spreading or not that again come from the history only ask the patient is the size increasing or uh, it is similar like uh, from the beginning only so the size is increasing or decrease increasing or either it is in same in size so that is the second thing you need to keep in mind the third thing like uh, while uh, seeing in the ct scan is there any calcification is there or not so these three thing if you uh, combine together then you you can easily identify either it is a benign or a malignant right so history is also one of the major important thing to uh, identify it is a benign, uh, benign, benign tumor or a malignant tumor so if it is spreading in uh, if it is increasing in size and the history is longer and uh, the size is increasing faster and you see the calcification then you can identify okay it is a malignant tumor but the patient is saying from 10 years from 15 years the size is same uh, the size is not increasing there is no pain there is no redness there is no complaint so in that cases you can uh, you, and there is no calcification in ct scans so in that cases you can think that okay it is a benign tumor am i clear yes sir okay, any any more questions okay sir uh, there is another question uh, from the uh, option uh, how frequently can ct scan uh, uh, how fre frequently can ct scan be done and why so what uh, i just uh, Yes. 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 Kapil. The frequency of CT scan, sir. Means uh, why? Why the CT has? How frequently the CT scan has to be done? Is the, is this the question? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sir, yes. Okay. I don't know. So, I yeah. to hear about this. Okay. This, 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 this is the very good question. Uh, so yeah. how frequently the CT scan has to be done? So see, as you know, as if any one of has done your ct scan or has gone with your attender or if your relative to do for ct scan ct scan is one of the expensive uh, scans to be done okay and uh, it has uh, while doing ct scan they take consent that it, it has some side effects also so like for the pregnant lady it cannot be done i think everyone knows right so it has few side effects also so while prescribing CT scan, you, you need to be very clear why you want to CT scan to be done. If you think that it is a, if your history and clinical evaluation says that it is, it is a benign uh, tumor, it is not increasing in size, and uh, patient is patient also don't uh, want it to be removed, then why the CT scan has to be done, right? It is from 20 years. The mass is from 20 years, and patient has just come. That the, will this mass will do any other problem in the future or not? Only to know that. So in that cases, do you think the CT scan has to be prescribed? No, because CT scan is one of the expensive ones. So in only in the cases where you want the surgery to be done, where you where do you think the tumor has been spread uh, till you know you want to know the extension of the tumors. So in that cases, the CT scan has to be done, and it, it always has to be done before surgery. And if you and uh, in the if it if you think the mass is malignant, then after one month or two months or three months of the sur post surgical thing, you can once you can do so to know that the total mass has been removed or not. And I think uh, that uh, nowadays in the advancement that can easily be known by histopathological lab also. If you give the mass, right? If you uh, remove the mass and send it to the histopathological lab, so they, that lab person easily can say that the posterior pole has been removed or not, or some area of the tumor is left in the eye. So they, they will tell you. So that will also help you help us to uh, tell that that we need to do ct scan again or not so uh, you need to 
do CT scan very less only in the cases where you think it is very very urgent in that cases only we need to uh, send for CT scan any more question Kapil okay. uh, yes sir what are the contact indication for CT scan from the data part thank you sir thank you sir for the question okay okay so uh, it has two contraindications systemic and i also so in i always because it is a radiation so it can cause cataract thing and uh, uh, it can uh, make your vitreous a little bit uh, densified and while see in while comes to the systemic one it is totally uh, uh, contraindicated in the pregnant one okay and while doing ct scan if if it is a uh, contrast has to be done so in contrast how the contrast is done uh, a fluid is injected right and that like we do in FFF fluorescein fundus angiography so how we uh, inject a dye in the same way in the if you want a contrast image or dye has to be inserted so that dye has also again a side effect systemic side effect like vomiting and the idea and sometimes uh, uh, like in asthma cases if uh, it is it has some cardiac problem it is totally contraindicated so there are two contraindications in i separate and systemic separate so before doing the ct scan always the radiologist asks this question to the patient and they tell them to feel the uh, consent and uh, then only the ct scan is done is it clear Hello, Kapil. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, any, it is clear, sir. Yes, sir. This uh, is there is other, another question from the. While for the city, city scan. Well, yes, yes, Kapil. Once again. Uh, when should we perform the dynamic imaging? about dynamic sir. yes yes again i'm i'm not able to understand uh, your question yes sir uh, when to perform dy dynamic imaging okay dynamic, dynamic imaging, imaging sir. yes okay, sir. so dynamic uh, like dynamic uh, what is different in dynamic like uh, they uh, they uh, increase the rate of the scan like uh, if it is a 1500 uh, uh, scans in per minute then they increase little bit more if you want little finer detail like in MRI so if you want little finer details so in that cases MRI has to be done generally in the fractures cases and uh, if you seen if you think that there is any injury in the brain so in that cases uh, the dynamic scan has to be done yeah. so I like to request all the activities uh, Anybody have the question? Please unmute your mic one and can ask the question. Okay, uh, sir, I have a uh, one query. So, now uh, what is the relation between uh, CT scan and ocularist? Yes, yes. What is the relation between uh, CT scan and the ocularist? okay so uh, as you know to be an ocularist you need to be you you need to be uh, you need to know about the oculoplasty thing right oculoplasty means orbital thing if you know about the orbit then only uh, uh, you can be a good ocularist so sometimes uh, it is a normal cases right if, with the eyeball sometimes i have seen in many of the cases like i have fitted prosthesis like two months before and after six months the patient comes that the prosthesis came out like prosthesis came out prosthesis is not fitting well so in six months i don't think uh, there will be very much difference in the socket so uh, in that case what was there there was a mass growing inside the orbit right and uh, that mass was pushing it and the mass was slowly increasing in size so it pushed out and uh, when uh, it became little bigger there was no place in the orbit to sit for the prosthesis so so, so the prosthesis came out so if if you know uh so what things you need to explain the patient 
why the prosthesis is coming out right so in that cases you need to understand uh, the ct scan can be done and uh, uh, there can be the mass which is pushing uh, out and the surgical it, it need to be surgically removed and after that the prosthesis has to be fitted so one thing the second thing uh, like any patient came to you after enucleation right and if it is a retinoblastoma child is there and you have fitted the prosthesis and uh, the patient uh, like uh, comes after again one year and two year and telling that there is pain in the brain and uh, the uh, uh, the baby is falling uh, un being unconscious uh, uh, frequently uh, sometimes vomiting also so if they gives like this history then you need to know that uh, okay what is ret retinoblastoma and uh, how it can regrow in the retinoblastoma cases either the enucleation has to be has been done then also it can grow if few sheets of that tumor has been left in the so uh, orbit so in this way if if you are ocularist this uh, this orbital parts and ct scan can help so in i generally uh, uh, being ocularist when i prescribe like in the implant implant cases where enucleation has been done and implant has been placed and sometimes the implant has been lost right patient comes and sir uh, there is no, and you, while palpating you feel there is no implant so where the implant has gone so to check it where the implant sometimes i have seen one patient the implant was totally sitting in uh, the inferior orbit and it was not palpable at all so while doing ct scan we saw that uh, implant is sitting in the inferior orbit and after that it was removed and our secondary implant was placed so in this way uh, it is beneficial for the ocularist and ocularist also can uh, send the patient to do for ct scan if if they feel that the prosthesis is not fitting well and if if you feel that some mass is there and always can refer oculoplasty surgeon to do the surgeries so am i able uh, to give your answer kapil yeah, yes i guess uh, so if we have to summarize our presentation in summary so how 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 can we summarize this presentation yes yes if we have to okay. summarize this all presentation yes. okay how to explain this okay so in in uh, because a ct scan is a vast thing so in a, uh, if you want to uh, do a summary always uh, think that uh, ct scan uh, has to be done only in needed cases and while interpreting a ct scan you need to compare uh, uh, for the abnormal with the other eyes and uh, ct scan uh, is generally done while doing the surgery or to see the uh, uh, extent of the tumors and most of the times it is uh, beneficial or m mainly indicated in the malignant tumors uh, so in in short if we have to say and they are different uh, like uh, i have told you they are different plane like coronal axial and uh, sagittal cuts so this comes this all comes in the principle so if you are if you are clear with the principle if you are clear with the um theory of the ct scan then only you will you'll be able to interpret the reports okay sir uh thank you so much uh sir for the informative session and so Welcome. thanks to all attendees uh, yes sir attendees uh, for their participa participation and for the question as well so i guess we have discussed most of the question if anybody have any queries please uh, and, and can ask uh, any further queries also can be discussed in our group yes sir. i guess we have almost completed all the question uh okay. okay before ending the uh, today's session i'd like to um, uh, again express my gratitude towards the presenter and all the attendees and also i'd like to appreciate all the helping hands for this italks program uh, here with i am ending uh, the today's session uh, requesting all of you to drop your review and feedback so stay safe uh, stay at home and keep in touch
Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you.